1972, the space race officially ended as NASA sent one last crew of astronauts to the surface of the moon aboard the Apollo 17. This was the brass ring that both the US and the Soviets were reaching for, the moonshot that would determine who had supremacy in space. In the current age of renewed space exploration, the next great leap will clearly involve sending astronauts to Mars. SpaceX founder Elon Musk has made no secret of his plans to send humans to Mars by 2050. The tech titan has talked about his dream to make a human colony on the red planet. The key to this plan is SpaceX's Starship, a deep space transportation system that many industry experts and astronauts are calling a game changer in space exploration and the future of space travel both in terms of commercial space tourism and furthering aerospace research. The SpaceX Starship spacecraft and its super heavy rocket, known simply as Starship, is a fully reusable transportation system designed to carry crew and cargo to the moon, Mars, and to Earth's orbit. And despite being billed as the tallest and most powerful launch vehicle ever built, SpaceX's Starship has to face big problems on its way to Mars. Next to Earth, Mars is the most habitable location in the solar system, by terrestrial standards. Multiple lines of evidence accumulated over the course of decades have also shown that it may have supported life at one time. Unfortunately, sending astronauts to Mars will inevitably entail a number of distinct challenges, which arise from logistics and technology to human factors and the distances involved. Launch windows between Earth and Mars only occur every two years when both planets are at the closest in their orbits to each other, or otherwise when Mars is in opposition relative to the Sun. During these windows, a spacecraft can make the journey from Earth to Mars in 150 to 300 days, or about 5 to 10 months. This makes resupply missions impractical since astronauts cannot wait that long to receive much needed shipments of food, fuel, and other supplies. Now, suppose Starship will transport 10 passengers to Mars. One astronaut consumes about 2.5 kilograms of food, about 3 liters of water or other beverages, and one kilogram of oxygen per day. It may not sound like much, but don't forget, when launching spacecraft off the planet, each kilogram is costly. Otherwise, SpaceX's Starship has plenty of space, but it does have a limit of up mass. And if we're to have food for five years, which is the longevity of the mission, we're talking 45 tons. The number is almost half of the total launch mass. And don't forget, that everything is freeze-dried, and the other half is water. Thus, it could be said that you'll need one starship just for food and water to keep 10 astronauts alive for five years. Obviously, we need better solutions to deal with this matter. Mass constrains the size of a Mars-bound spacecraft and what it can do in space. Every maneuver costs fuel to fire rocket motors, and this fuel must currently be carried into space on the spacecraft. SpaceX's plan is for its crewed Starship vehicle to be refueled in space by a separately launched fuel tanker. That means much more fuel can be carried into orbit than could be carried on a single launch. Another challenge that is intimately connected with fuel is time. Missions that send spacecraft with no crew to the outer planets often travel complex trajectories around the sun. They use a technique called gravity assist maneuvering to effectively slingshot around different planets to gain enough momentum to reach their target. This saves a lot of fuel, but can result in missions that take years to reach their destinations. Clearly, this is something humans would not want to do. Both Earth and Mars have almost circular orbits, and a maneuver known as the home and transfer is the most fuel-efficient way to travel between two planets. Basically, without going into too much detail, this is where a spacecraft does a single burn into an elliptical transfer orbit from one planet to the other. A home and transfer between Earth and Mars takes around 259 days, or between 8 to 9 months, and is only possible approximately every two years due to the different orbits around the Sun of Earth and Mars. A spacecraft could reach Mars in a shorter time, SpaceX is claiming 6 months, but you guessed it, it would cost more fuel to do it that way. Now, when the spacecraft arrives in the atmosphere of Mars, the next challenge would be landing. A spacecraft entering Earth is able to use the drag generated by interaction with the atmosphere to slow down. 
This allows the craft to land safely on the Earth's surface, provided it can survive the related heating. But the atmosphere on Mars is about 100 times thinner than Earth's. That means less potential for drag, so it isn't possible to land safely without some kind of aid. Some missions have landed on airbags, such as NASA's Pathfinder mission, while others have used thrusters, like NASA's Phoenix mission. The latter, once again, requires more fuel. A Martian day lasts 24 hours and 37 minutes, but the similarities with Earth stop there. The thin atmosphere on Mars means it can't retain heat as well as Earth does, so life on Mars is characterized by large extremes in temperature during the day and night cycle. Mars has a maximum temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, which sounds quite pleasant, but its minimum temperature is negative 140 degrees Celsius, and its average temperature is negative 63 degrees Celsius. The average winter temperature at the Earth's South Pole is about negative 49 degrees Celsius. So we need to be very selective about where we choose to live on Mars and how we manage temperature during the night. The gravity on Mars is 38% of Earth's, so you'd feel lighter, but the air is principally carbon dioxide, with several percent of nitrogen, so it's completely unbreathable. We would need to build a climate-controlled place just to live there. SpaceX plans to launch several cargo flights, including critical infrastructures such as greenhouses, solar panels, and, you guessed it, a fuel production facility for return missions to Earth. Life on Mars would be possible and several simulation trials have already been done on Earth to see how people would cope with such an existence. Now the final challenge is the return journey and getting people safely back to Earth. Apollo 11 entered Earth's atmosphere at about 40,000 kilometers per hour, which is just below the velocity required to escape Earth's orbit. Spacecraft returning from Mars will have re-entry velocities from 47 to 54,000 kilometers per hour, depending on the orbit they use to arrive at Earth. They could slow down into low Earth orbit around Earth to around 28,800 kilometers per hour before entering the atmosphere. But as you guessed, they'd need extra fuel to do that. And if they just barrel into the atmosphere, it will do all the declaration for them. We just need to make sure we don't kill the astronauts with G-forces or burn them up due to excess heating. These are just some of the challenges facing a Mars-bound mission, but all of the technological building blocks to solve them are there. We just need to spend the time and the money and bring it all together. And that's it for today's episode. We thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.